10, it's The Apprentice. You're hired, with adoring fan Hattie Burkett discussing Lorraine's victory. But now, it's History Detective 2. somewhere very special indeed. The D-Day landing sites in France. But how easy will it be to get there? So here is our epic voyage to the D-Day landing sites in picture form. We'll start at Wells, no, not Wales, then we'll drive to Portsmouth and take the overnight 10 hour ferry to St. Marlow in France. In the morning, We'll hit the road again, ending up after going through several of the D-Day landing beaches in the French city of Whistler. Unfortunately, school funds didn't quite cover the ferry tickets, so we had to sell Charles as a slave. Come here, slave! Rate, it cashed in for 2.4 million pounds. But unfortunately, though, Charles escaped. <laughs> World War II killed millions. John! I told you I was going to get my revenge, and it's going to start! We're sorry to disconnect you. Technical hitch. You'll be right back on in a second. And then! It looks as if this conversation might continue quite a while. We'll get back to watching the documentary, and you can finish watching this conversation at the end. John, you're on. Oh, oh, hello well, and welcome back to History Detective. Uh, the time is 6 a.m. and in one hour we'll be on French turf. You may be wondering though, what actually happened that day? At 6.30 on June the 6th, 1944, 5,000 ships and 4,000 ship-to-shore craft unleashed a fury on the Germans so big they struggled to hold it off. The Allies had five sites codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. By nearly nightfall, all 175,000 men were ashore. On that day, Hitler's defences fell. Well, here we are, France. I wonder what it would be like to witness the DA landings. Well, we all know that's impossible, as time machines don't exist. We'll just have to do a reenactment instead. So this is it, a rough outline on what happened during that fateful day. Here were hedgehogs, large metal structures which prevented the British boat from driving up the beach. Here on the cliffs were the German forts to defend from the Brits. And golly gosh, they've arrived! The troops then left their boats and ran towards the forts. Sadly, many died fighting for their country, although eventually overpowering the Germans. Well, now you know. From that animation, you may think the troops had it easy. They didn't. Here is an extract from a German newsreel shown in May 1944, before the D-Day landings. Seit Monaten wird auf der britischen Insel die Reklametrommel für die zweite Front geschlagen. So bringen sich Briten und Amerikaner in Invasionsstimmung. Darüber hinaus verbinden sie damit die Hoffnung, Deutschland in einem Nervenkrieg zu verschleißen. 
Ihr Kriegsgeschrei prallt an der anderen Küste wie die Brandung ab. Das vermag weder Männer noch Beton zu erschüttern. Wir haben unsere Vorbereitungen beendet und erwarten in aller Ruhe den Feind. Er ist dabei, sich nun, wie Feindberichte sagen, auch geistig auf die Hölle der Brückenköpfe einzustellen. You might have noticed from that clip the sheer size of fortifications the American and English troops had to navigate themselves through. Also, towards the end, did you see the modes of stopping ships from coming ashore? Some of these were called hedgehogs, and they looked very menacing. But if you were part of the D-Day landings, they looked really, really tempting to hide behind. The D-Day beaches weren't the only thing we went to visit on the French D-Day trip. Take a look at this. Here we are at the American Airborne Museum, and behind me is a parachute plane, and it's the real thing. There are many artifacts and weapons here at the museum. One is the US Army Howitzer. Here's another artifact, the anti-aircraft gun. Why do you think the Germans were so surprised from the D-Day landing? Ah, oh, it's an interesting question. I think it was possibly because of the very clever misinformation that had been sent out by the Allies and in particular Eisenhower, who was in control of the whole operation, uh, believed that the importance of truth was so great that it had to be covered with lies. And that was done so effectively that the landings on Omaha and Utah and Sword and Juneau and Gold Beaches were completely unexpected.